Good job, Michael. Yeah, you're back. Thank you. I can see you now. Okay. All right. We're going to start our story. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rosie. Thank you for joining our Zoom. Um, today, we're going to start telling stories. Thank you. No? I'm Feli. I'm Feli. Today we're gonna show you and uh, we're gonna tell you the story of Snow White. So we're gonna start now. Long, long ago, in a magnificent castle, there lived a pretty young princess named Snow White. Her stepmother, the queen, was a wicked woman whose greatest fear was that Snow White's beauty would one day become greater than her own. And so Snow White was dressed in rugs and forced to be her stepmother's servant. Her long days were spent scrubbing floors and cooking meals. Still, the evil stepmother worried that as Snow White grew, so would be her beauty. Every day, the queen looked in her magic mirror, anxiously asking, magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? You are the fairest one of all. The mirror would always reply, and the queen would, would be content for another day. Snow White was an obedient stepdaughter who happily did her work while daydreaming of a handsome prince who might one day fall in love with her and take her to live with him in his castle. One morning, as she drew water from the well, she made a wish that one day her dream would come true. As if by magic, a handsome young prince appeared before her. He had been watching Snow White as she drew water from the well and was entranced by her beauty. But Snow White was shy and fled to the tower balcony. As the prince sang her love song, Snow White placed a kiss on her friend the dove who carried it to her beloved. On that day, the queen's magic mural told the queen that Snow White was the fairest in all the land. In a jealous sage, the queen called one of her royal huntsmen, take Snow White far into the forest and kill her, she commanded. And as a proof of your deed, bring me back her heart in this and she handed him a carved box. The huntsman began his deadly mission, telling her they were going for a walk. He took Snow White deep into the forest. Snow White sang a happy tune, gathering flowers and thinking of her handsome prince. Among the flowers, she heard the baby cry that had fallen one of its nest. When she found the little creature, she picked it up and comforted it. Don't worry, your mama and papa can't be far. She could. Feeling better, the little bird set off to find its parents. When they reached the heart of the forest, the huntsman drew his dagger. As he crept up behind Snow White, she turned and screamed, realizing what was about to happen. When the huntsman saw the fear in the prince's eyes, he fell to his knees. I beg of you, your highness, forgive me, he pleaded. He told Snow White of the queen's jealousy and how he was ordered to bring Snow White's heart back to the castle 
as proof of his deed. Now quick, child, he told her, run away, hide. Snow White was very frightened. He gaps, wheeled around, and ran into the forest. That's the end of the story of the Snow White. Wow, Vicky, that was a great story. Yes, I like it too. All right, right now it's my turn. I have a story. My story is the snake and the foolish frog. Hey, hey. Oh, I like it. Okay, can you hear it now? Once a snake who had grown weak with old age came across a pond where many frogs lived with their king, queen, and little prince. The snake had not eaten for many days. He tried to catch some of the frogs, but was too weak to catch them. I will have to think of some solution or I will die soon, the snake thought. Just then, he saw the frog prince and his friends. They were busy in their game, did not notice the snake. When they came very close, one of them saw the snake and jumped. Oh, a snake, he shouted in fear. All of them ran for their life, but when he the snake did not move. The frog prince went up to it. The snake did still not move. Let me see if he is dead, said the frog prince. Knock on the snake head and jump away quickly. The snake slowly opened its eye and said, Don't worry, I will not get angry no matter what you do. The frog were very surprised. I won't buy a sage son, explained the snake. The sage got angry and cursed me that I would carry frogs on my back for the rest of my life. Hearing this, the frog prince jumped with joy. Then I will ride your back, he said. The frog prince jumped on top of the snake and commanded, Take me to my parents. The king and the queen were amazed at sight. Father, look, I'm riding a snake, shouted the prince. Let us also ride a snake, the queen urged the king frog. So they all sat on the snake. You're moving very slow, complained the prince. What can I do, answered the snake slightly. I have not eaten for several days. Why have you not eaten? The Lord Mouth should be fast and strong, say the king. I can eat only with your permission, answered the snake. Your subjects are my food. How can I permit you to eat us? asked the king. Not lower frogs, explained the snake. I cannot permit you to eat my subject, said the king. The prince was upset and cried, Father, please permit him. I don't want to lose him. Even the queen spoke up. Do permit the snake. How many frogs can he eat anyway? We have many subjects. At least the king had granted permission. The snake began to eat many frogs every day. Soon he was very strong, very healthy. Now he moved very quickly. The prince was thrilled to ride a snake that moved so fast. One day, the snake went to the frog king. Oh, I'm so hungry, king. There's no more frog left in the pond. So now I'm going to catch you all. And the wake snake pound on all three lower frogs and ate them all. Oh, oh so sad for the frogs. Right, guys? 
How do you guys think about our story? Oh my God, for me, it's so sad for the frog. So don't ever trust to anyone. Mm -hmm. I feel sad for the frogs because they trusted the snake. I know. You sh they shouldn't have trusted the snake. I know. Okay. I know. How, how about Snow White? Do you like the story of Snow White? Yes, I do. You guys? Yes. Okay. <laughs>